For this lesson, we'll be going over mesh analysis. Mesh analysis is a network analysis procedure that uses currents as the unknowns. Mesh analysis may also be known as loop current method or Maxwell's loop current method. Same thing, it's, it's referred to these same terms, just be aware. Also, mesh analysis uses the equations that are based on Kirchhoff's second law, KVLs, which means your total voltage will equal all your voltages combined. So, and then we'll go over that later on in the examples. The process for mesh analysis consists of four simple steps. One, determine the maximum amount of loops required for a circuit. Second, establish a fixed direction for these loops. Usually I pick clockwise. As long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. You can pick counterclockwise. Next, you write out the KVL equations for each loop. Be advised, the number of loops minus one is the equations required for that uh, circuit. So if you have four loops, you only require three equations. Lastly, compute the current for all the equations in your calculator. We're going to use a Casio 115. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to use matrix mode and equation mode. That way, you can, whatever way you feel comfortable with, you can utilize. Unfortunately, mesh analysis does have pitfalls. One, you must mind the current loop direction when writing out your equations. For example, if you look at our illustration here, we have um, I1 going clockwise, which is going downward through the forearm resistor, and then I2 going the opposite direction. So that would be I1 minus I2. And then be aware because that might not always be the case. They might not go opposite directions. They may go the same direction. But we'll go over that in an example. Also, mind the current and voltage polarities when, uh, com when coming up with your equation. Same thing. It may be the 10 volts could have been positive or negative, but however, for this equation, it's a negative 10 volts based on the current flow direction. And we'll go over that in the equation. Also, be aware of your, current lim uh, your calculator limitations. Some calculators can only handle three equations. They can't handle more than that at a time. So if you have four equations, you're kind of SOL for on a time constraint scale. So for a Casio 115, the matrices and equation mode can handle three equations. Also, the Casio 115 cannot do matrix mode or an equation mode with complex functions. So you cannot use polar form in the matrix in the matrix mode. So be advised. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we uh, do some examples. For our first example, we're going to go over the steps that we talked about in the PowerPoint and see if we can find the currents flowing through the resistors in this circuit. So we're going to do a step one. I'm going to do step one and step two close to the same time. That way you get a rhythm for it. So we're going to find our loops and establish a direction. So for our first one, our, flow, our current flow would be I1. So this is one loop. I2. This would be a second loop. Again, current's going to flow through, flow through this loop. And lastly, I3, because there's a loop going in the outskirts of the circuit. So you'd have current flowing around it this way. So that would count as your third loop. And that's the maximum amount of loops I can make possible with this circuit. So I have a total of three loops. Now we need to write our KVL equations. Now KVL is n minus one. So since we have three loops, you only require two equations. Now I can use I3, I2, I can use I1, I3, doesn't matter. This one I'm going to use I1 and I2. So let's make our equations. So equation one, and this is the area that trips people up. We're going to start with zero equals, start out with zero every time. We're going to simplify it later. We'll start with zero for now. And then look at the current flow direction. It's going to a negative 100 volts. So it's going to be negative 100 volts. And it's going to be plus, and we're going through a 5 ohm resistor. So it's going to be 5 ohms, I1. Then we're going through a 10 ohm resistor. So it's going to be plus 10 ohms, I1. For this 10 ohm resistor, we have to take into account the I2 current. It's going the opposite direction. So I2 would be going this way. I1 is going this way. Since that be the case, it would be negative 10 ohm, I2 for equation number one. So let's simplify this down. 
I'm going to move my 100 volts to the left here, so it's going to be 100 volts, because if you add 100 volts here, cancel that one out, and add 100 volts over here, that's how we get that one. Then we're going to add our common currents together, so this one I have 5 plus 10, so that's going to be 15 ohms for I1. Then it's going to be minus 10 ohms I2. And that's our simplified equation for our first one. Okay, let's do our second loop. So let's do equation number two. Zero equals, and we'll start with this 10 ohm resistor. So it's going to be 10 ohms I2 minus 10 ohms I1. Same reason, current's going this direction for I2. It's going downward for I1. All right plus 15 ohms so ohm resistor, so it's 15 ohm I2, plus 20 ohm I2. Now we need to simplify this down, so it's 0 equals, now I'm going to move my I1 to the, first area, to the first part of the equation, that way it makes it easier when I do my matrix. So it's going to be negative 10 ohm I1, then it's plus 10, plus 15 is 25, plus 20, it's 45. So it's 45 I2. And that would be our second equation. So if you're going to input this in a matrix, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be 15 ohms minus 10 ohms and then negative 10 ohms plus 45 ohms. And then we have our second matrix, which is 100 and 0. So we've created a 2 by 2 matrix here right. and then a 2 by 1 So here. we're going to go over two ways to solve this problem. We have the matrix mode and the equation mode. So let's start with the matrix mode. That's one that most people are, are very common or have very lot of practice with. So we'll start with that one. So I'm going to do mode button and this one's going to be 6 for matrix. And then we're going to start with matrix A. So 1 and this is a 2 by 2 so option 5 and I'm going to input my variables, so 15, negative 10, negative 10, and then 45. Okay, that's my first matrix, matrix A. Now we're going to do a second matrix, so it's mode 6 for matrix, and this is 2 for matrix B. And this is going to be a 2 by 1, so it's 6. So this one's going to be 100, and then 0. Okay. So in this calculator, we already inputted matrix A and matrix B, so it's already saved in there. Now, let's do the math with it. So it's, so it's going to be shift, matrix, and then number three for matrix A, inverted, and then it's going to be times matrix B. So shift, matrix, matrix B, and then hit equal. And I1 is going to come out to be 7.82 amps. And I2 is going to come out to be 1.74 amps. So that's the first way we can solve it using the matrix mode. Now let's try my favorite, which is the equation mode. So we're going back to mode. Number five is equation. And since this is a two variable equation, it's going to be option one. And we're going to input it just like last time 15, negative 10. 100, negative 10, 45, and 0. It gives us the answer of I1 equals 7.82 or 7.83 amps, and then I2, 1.74 amps. So given the matrix method and the equation method gave us the same answer, so I1 equals 7.83 amps, and I2 gave us an answer of 1.74 amps. So if we want to find the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor, it would be 1.74 amps going upward, and then 7.83 amps going downward. 
And if you find the difference of those two, it would be 7.83 minus 1.74 gives you an answer of 6.09 amps going downward. Since there's, mo since there's more current flowing downward, that takes the field, so it's 6.09 amps going downward if you had to find the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. So this would be your final answer right here, and we'll step it up a notch on our next problem. For this next example, we've got something that's a little bit more complicated, but we can solve it with the same steps as the previous problem. So, same thing as last time, we're going to go to step one. We're going to find our loops. So I have loop one right here, we'll call this I1. Loop right here, I2. We have a loop right here, I3. And then we have one more loop going on the outside here. And this is going to be I4. So right now I have four loops. And just because my general rule, I choose clockwise. Now we're going to write our KVL equations. N minus 1, I have four loops. So that's going to come out to be three equations. So equation 1. going to be 0 equals, I'm going to start I1, so it's, look at the current direction, minus 24, so it's minus 24, so I'm going to put out volts. For this next one, I'm going to leave the units out just to save us a little time, so it's going to be plus 4K I1, taking this 4K resistor, and then minus, look at the direction, I3 is going this way. I1 is going this way. So it's going to be minus 4K I3. Excuse my handwriting. And then plus 2K I1. And again, opposite directions. So it's going to be minus 2K I2. So let's simplify this up. I'm going to move our voltage source to one side. So it's going to be 24 volts equals, and it's going to be 4 plus 2, 6K, I1. And then we're going to do minus, and again, I like to keep I1, I2, I3, so when you do the matrix, it's easy to track. So I2 is negative 2K, I2, and minus 4K, I3. And that right there is going to be your equation 1. Let's see if we can fit equation 2 down here without my handwriting getting too choppy. So it's going to be 0 equals, and I'll start with a 2k, so it's 2k i2 minus, opposite directions, 2k i1, then it's going to the 3k ohm resistor, so it's plus 3k i2, and let's see I have i2 going this way, I3 going this way, so that's opposite direction, so it's minus 3K I3, and then lastly, the 6K ohm resistor, so it's going to be plus 6K I2. And let's simplify this down. 0 equals, and that's negative 2K I1, so I got my I1, I2, so it's 2K plus 3K plus 6K. So right there, that comes out to be 9 plus 2 is 11, so it's plus 11k for I2. And then we have minus 3k I3. So that'll give our second equation. So let's move these equations over. That way I can fit our last equation in there. So our last equation is going to be equation number 3. It's going to come out to be 0 equals, I'll start with this 4K ohm resistor, so it's going to be 4K I3 minus 4K I1, again opposite direction, let's go to this 1K resistor, so it's going to be plus 1K I3, and another plus, we're going to go to this 3K ohm resistor, 3K I3, and minus, opposite direction, 3K I2. Simplifying this one down, let's move I1 to the first spot, so it's negative 4K I1 
minus 3ki2 plus, and that's going to be 4 plus 1 plus 3, it's going to be 8ki3. And that'll be our last equation. So bring it over here. So if you're going to put this in a matrix, it looks something like this. Let's see if I can make it look somewhat decent. 6 kilo, negative 2 kilo, negative 4 kilo, negative 2 kilo, 11 kilo, negative 3 kilo, and then negative 4 kilo, negative 3 kilo, and then 8 kilo. So that's going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. And then we have one more matrix that's going to be a 3 by 1, which is going to be 24, 0, and 0. In a sense, this is one side, and this is one side. And this would be I1. Let's I plug two, and chug this in our calculator. And I3. Instead, I use the matrix so mode and the equation mode. And see we're going to do the be. equation mode just because it's quicker. And obviously, every second counts when taking that test. So we're going to mode, option 5. And since it's a 3x3 three three matrix or three variables, we're going to choose option 2 input our variables. So I got 6k, negative 2k, negative 4k, 24 volts, and again negative 2k, 11k, and this is going to be negative 3k, and that's a zero. So we'll go down to the next spot. So it's a negative 4k, and then negative 3k, and last, 8k. I could do 10 to the third, but this is just keeping it simple that we see what I'm doing. I just type in all the zeros, and then a zero there. Final answer, 8.69 or 8.70 milliamps for I1, I2, 3.08 milliamps for I2. And then I3 is 5.50 milliamps. So our final answers would be I1 equals 8.70 milliamps. I2 equals 3.08 milliamps. And then I3 comes out to be 5.50 milliamps. And this would be your final answer. Hopefully you have enough to get your feet wet and get some practice problems in. And I hope you all have a good day.